So the next speaker is Patrick Plonsky, and his talk will be about approximation algorithms for height varying for two of the varying view cones. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. Hi, right, thank you for the introduction. Um, I am Patrick Plonsky. Uh, I'm from the University of Minnesota, um, and this is a work in collaboration with my advisor, uh, Professor Volking Ischler. Um, so, unmanned aerial vehicles, or UAVs, have the potential to automate a variety of inspection tasks, um, such as in the realms of search and rescue, um, inspection of structures, uh, and inspection of outdoor environments such as farms. Um, however, their battery life is severely limited. Uh, it, we almost never get more than about 25 minutes, at least for the highly maneuverable copters that are widely used for this. Uh, therefore, it is quite important that we can gather the information efficiently. Sorry about this. All right. <laughs> um, in the Robotic Sensor Networks Lab, we are developing algorithms to automate inspection of apple orchards so that farmers can learn valuable information about tree health and expected yield. Um, we are also working on inspection of cornfields. Uh, precision agriculture for row crops, such as corn, focuses on mapping regions of the field that are stressed in a particular way so that custom treatment plans can be developed. Um, these custom plans for application of fertilizer and chemicals allow reduced overall chemical and fertilizer application, which saves money for farmers um, and it also helps the environment, so it's good. Motivated by um, row crop inspection, we formulate the following problem. Um, suppose we have a UAV which must take off from the ground plane and image N objects on the ground as quickly as possible. Uh, the UAV is equipped with a downward-facing camera with a field of view to alpha. Um, so alpha is, of course, the maximum offset. Um, and each object has some associated height, which is the maximum height of the camera for imaging that object. Um, and you can think of this uh, as, as like a prior knowledge about a field, that if we know there are some parts that we might want to have a higher resolution data set for, whereas there could be some parts that we're less interested in, and it's okay to view them from higher up. Um, and then we require that the UAV must lift off and land at a fixed position, which is practical. Um, now, we can formulate this as the dual, which is to find a trajectory to visit um, N viewing cones. And these cones have the property that when the UAV is in the cone, um, the camera on the UAV will be able to see the point, uh, which is the apex of the cone, uh, while satisfying the height constraint. Um, and the cone heights correspond with the, the maximum altitudes at which the ground objects can be resolved. This is a variant of the traveling salesman problem with neighborhoods. Uh, now, TSP is NP hard, so uh, TSPN is also NP hard. Um, TSPN is actually quite a bit harder than TSP uh, because even in Euclidean space, it is APX hard. It is proven that there can be no p test for it. Um, however, there is a p test uh, for disjoint, fat, similarly sized neighborhoods, uh, which we can directly apply to this problem if we have fat cones, so a, a wide viewing angle and if they're also disjoint. Um, however, the requirement that they be disjoint is incredibly limiting in practice because ideally, we would like to be able to fly up high and then image a lot of objects at once. Um, there are some related problems that have been solved as an OMP test for arbitrary fat disjoint neighborhoods in a plane. Um, uh, that is a relaxation of the requirement that they be similarly sized. However, it requires that they're on a plane, which we don't have. Um, there are also constant factor approximations for intersecting disks or balls of similar size. Um, that works for 3D. Um, or possibly even disks of arbitrary size on the plane. That's a recent archive result. Um, this work is the first known approximation of intersecting 3D cones. It's also the first known approximation for non-fat cones of this particular configuration. Um, so I'm going to talk about our approach for disjoint cones of similar height. 
Uh, and then uh, what we do when the heights can be widely different, um, as well as when the cones intersect. So first approach, which we call slice visit, uh, we just fix a plane parallel to the ground at height HT, which is the minimum height of any of the input cones. We intersect this plane with all the cones. Uh, and then we can plan a tour in this plane pretty easily. It's just a bunch of disks. Um, we can find a tour of the disjoint, in the disjoint case, uh, we can find the tour using p-test. Um, and then we can connect the tour with a liftoff point using two vertical line segments. Um, so if we restrict our tour to visit cone i at ht, the height of the tour, um, and the optimal tour visited at a higher height, uh, then we could be longer than the optimal tour for that particular cone by a factor which is proportional to the height of the tour, or the difference in the height of the tour and the optimal height um, times tangent alpha. Um, we can combine this with a lower bound on the length of the optimal tour um, that if the cones are not intersecting, uh, then we have a lower bound of n times ht tan alpha. Uh, combining these bounds together, we obtain an approximation factor which does not depend on n, which is good. Uh, it does depend on the uh, ratio of the maximum cone height to the mean cone height, quantity squared. Um, and then we have a 1 plus tan alpha term. Now this max over mean quantity squared can be very bad. Um, so for our second approach, we first sort the cones by height collect them into a logarithmic number of bins of doubling height. And then we just execute slice visit separately for each bin. Um, and by doing this, we obtain an approximation factor, uh, which, well, it's the same as the previous one, but now instead of um, maximum over mean quantity squared, we have logarithm of max divided by min, which is usually um, quite a bit better. Thus far, we've considered only disjoint cones. Uh, the standard method in the literature uh, when you have intersecting neighborhoods for TSPN is you select a maximal independent set, uh, which is a set, a disjoint set of neighborhoods that have the property that they intersect all of the neighborhoods in your um, input. Uh, then you find a tour that efficiently visits the cones in the MIS. And then for each cone in the MIS, uh, you perform a maneuver to ensure that all the intersecting um, all the intersecting neighborhoods are also visited. Our method for selecting the MIS is a simple greedy method starting from the shortest uh, cone. Um, and this method leaves us with the important property that we only actually need to visit the um, caps of the cones. We don't, uh, because it will be sufficient to visit all of the cones in the overall set if we can visit the caps of the MIS which is easier than having to visit the entire surface area of the MIS. Um, the Higging maneuver that we use is the following. When the tour visits cone I in the MIS, uh, we, um, we, have it, we have the uh, UAV follow two concentric circles. One of them is at radius HT tan alpha. The other is at radius 3 HT tan alpha. You might ask why do we need two circles. Uh, this is because we have binned the cones according to their height. So the actual height of the cone could be almost twice as tall as the height that we performed the tour. So we have to make sure that we intersect with any other cone that could also be almost twice as tall as the height of the tour. That's why we have our three HK tan alpha circle. And then, of course, we need the inner circle uh, to intersect any cones that could be in the middle. The cost of these Higging maneuvers um, is proportional to HK tan alpha for each cone visited. Um, uh, and so it makes our overall approximation factor no worse. In the big O sense. <laughs> um, so as presented, uh, concentric circle maneuvers can be quite costly. Um, and then it could be quite costly to perform the slice tours in series. Uh, for example, if we have a tall, a tall cone and a short cone really far this way, we have a tall cone and a short cone really far this way, it would be a lot more efficient to visit both of them over here and then go over here and visit both of these. Um, however, we can easily extend uh, the algorithm um, 
to, in, instead of blindly performing these maneuvers, we just uh, compute a set of critical points that are physically by the maneuvers. Um, and then we can just use a TSP solver, um, a Euclidean TSP solver, to visit these points. And there are some very fast, very efficient Euclidean TSP solvers. Um, and in practice, this is actually quite easy to implement. Uh, since there's no known approximation algorithm for intersecting cones, uh, we compared height visit with slice visit to justify the increasing complexity of having to deal with these cones of different heights instead of just visiting everything at the shortest possible height. Um, and you can see an example here of the MIS selected from a random input data set of cone positions and heights. Um, uh, you can see the shortest pos the, the slice visit tour at the height of the shortest cone and then the significantly shorter height visit tour that's allowed to uh, travel higher up um, to obtain more efficient coverage. Um, so height visit outperforms slice visit for randomly generated cones. Uh, it also outperforms it for cones that we randomly generate or that we generate from satellite imagery in a simulated precision agriculture application. Um, uh, for this, we, we just approximated the stress as the lack of green in a satellite image. And then we um, said we wanted to visit the more stressed areas at a lower altitude because they're more important for mapping the stress. Um, and then you can see there the computing tour, which was um, shorter than the tour that had to stay at a low altitude and do, it, and do the very tight coverage. So this is our approximation factor. 1 plus tan alpha can actually be very bad if you have a wide field of view. Um, and max h over min h can also be very bad if you just have a small number of points that you need to visit at a very low altitude. Um, however, I believe both of these can be made better um, without significantly changing the algorithm. I, I believe the 1 plus tan alpha is just a um, failure of the analysis that if we consider the case where we have a very small number of cones separately, we'll be able to do a lot better. Um, and then for the other one, uh, a similar extension for just very, very short cones might um, be suitable. So in conclusion, we formulate a new problem, uh, cone TSPN for UAV inspection. We present take approximation algorithms. Um, and in future work, we would like to eliminate dependence on alpha, and we like to consider online versions of the problem, as well as more complex models of the UAV, the camera, or the object image. Thank you for your time. I would be happy to answer any questions. Yeah. Can you speak up or shall I? Well, I'll, I'll bring you the mic. Okay. Uh, is there a way to sort of compare this to a multi-arm bandage kind of approach where you take the bandage and then you can see the higher altitude and the explore step and the lower altitude and the exploit step? So that's in some sense what you're doing? Uh, yeah. Um, it, it actually, I mean, in the, in the algorithm as, as presented, it doesn't matter what order we perform the um, slices in. So we could actually start from the highest. And this, this is actually a, a natural avenue of extending it to an online version, that we could, we could first um, do a very high altitude coverage, and then we could gain some information on which parts we might need to visit again, or which parts we might need to visit again at a lower altitude. Um, so that, that is a natural extension that we have been considering. Other questions? OK. Uh, have you thought about the uh, orienteering problem or press collecting TSP? Because uh, your application naturally maps to that setting when you fix the total travel distance and you want to maximize the number of cones you visit or maximize the quality of images you take. Yeah, for sure. Um, uh, I mean, we are assuming here that we have to visit every cone, and then we're really hoping that if we find the shortest trajectory that visits every cone, it will also be within one, within one battery life of the UAV. Um, but in practice, it is more likely to be a fixed battery life, and we want to visit as much as we can. Um, I guess the difficulties there are, I don't, I don't believe a partial coverage is ever going to be useful. Um, so I think in practice, it would be something more along the lines of um, a constraint that we still have to visit everything, but we also have to land again and swap out the battery after a certain amount of distance. 
Um, that's, that's sort of how I would formulate that, um, but it's, it's interesting. Florian? Thank you very much for the talk. Um, so a few slides in particular high level um, again of experience of cases of their design. And we have this very nice data structure about the way alpha complex, which describes that at a <coughs> combinatorial level, but at the same level about as high. I was wondering if that might be helpful to push down the path at least on the kind of logical level to go off the market. Yeah, uh can you repeat? <laughs> It'll be hard because it's no working. Um, Hello. Okay. Oh. Um, yes. Yeah, so as you as you slice the cones at a particular fixed height, you have a union of disks of um, various sizes, and um, there's this data structure called the weighted alpha complex, which describes um, by means of a sequence of simplicial complexes or graphs, um, if you like, uh, how these evolve as the height changes very naturally. And I, I think there might be a nice connection with maybe planning on the combinatorial level first a uh, path and then optimizing it later using that. Yeah, we should we should talk about that. I'm actually not familiar with this data structure. Um, I'm embarrassed to admit, but. <laughs> <laughs> okay, probably your last question while the next speaker sets up. Uh, come on. No more questions then. Thanks, Patrick.